iOS 6 is almost 12 years old and you guys would be surprised to know how many features are still working on this device after all these years. I kind of like being able to make videos like these because it kind of just shows how you guys can actually make good use of some of your older Apple devices if you have them laying around. So hopefully this video can help you guys out. But yeah, this is going to be how to make iOS 6 usable in 2024 from apps to music to all that awesome stuff. Let's get right into it. And by the way, a major prerequisite to this is going to be having a jailbreak. I know that's probably not the easiest thing to do and it can be a little hard. So if you guys want to learn more about how to do that, I could make a separate video because it is a whole other process, but jailbreaking essentially will give you a lot more flexibility in terms of installing a lot of these older applications and just bringing back a lot of functionality to this device. There is a very trusted jailbreak tool that I've been using in the past called Luke ZGD. Not paid to say that at all, but this tool has absolutely helped me get a lot of my older devices jailbroken and even downgraded as well. So if you guys are interested in that, be sure to comment down below, but I'll also link it as well if you guys want to check it out in your free time. But yeah, making this phone usable is honestly a process because back in the day, like 2021, when I first started this channel, it was very easy to use this device without the need of a jailbreak. But nowadays, you know, certificates have expired. Apple no longer supports 12 year old software. So naturally we got to get a little creative. So that's what we're going to be doing in today's video. Let's get right into it. All right, so the first thing that I wanna show you guys here is how to actually get apps onto this device. I think this is gonna be the most important part and actually is really gonna make this phone a lot more enjoyable because what is an iPhone without any apps that you can't download? Um, so this is gonna be a pretty simple process. For those who don't remember, the App Store did stop working on iOS 6, so this is gonna be a little fix around on how to fix this. You know, we got Pandora and everything, which is pretty cool to see. Definitely not something we see every single day. Um, but in order to do this, we do wanna open up Cydia and we wanna download these two repos. The first one is gonna be from the Invoxy Play Games. I'll have it all linked at the top right, but the tweak that we wanna install here is called Checkmate Store. And once that one is installed, we wanna install a second uh, tweak from the AOI uh, repo that'll also be linked at the top right of this video and this one's going to be called App Store Fix. So this is essentially going to fix the App Store issues that you have. So once those two tweaks are installed, you can actually open up the App Store and just start to get a little more familiar with it. Like the interface here definitely is very old. One thing you will notice is that it does not have a 100% functionality. So if you go into your purchase history, it'll simply say cannot connect to iTunes store, which is perfectly normal. So I would only stay within the search section of this app and then you can just search whatever you want. In this case, I searched up Facebook. If you aren't already logged in, you might need to sign into your Apple ID, which is completely normal. And it might also ask you for two-factor authentication as well. The way to actually get past this is to just enter in your password as you normally would and then enter the six digit code at the very end. So if your password is ABCD and your code is 123456, you would literally just add ABCD123456. So I hope that makes sense. Um, but it should be able to download whichever latest version of the app was available. One thing I did want to say is that if the app did not exist back in 2012, it simply will not download the last supported version because the app never had a supported version. So hopefully that makes sense. A lot of this is going to be trial and error so you guys can kind of pick and choose what works best for you. But yeah, I also thought it was pretty cool that we're actually able to open these apps as well. You know, like Subway Surfers is working pretty well. Instagram opens as well. You're able to log in, but you can't actually post anything. So your functionality is going to be pretty limited. But the one here that I really like is Pandora. For those who don't remember, Pandora was like a music streaming app. I never personally used it growing up because I grew up in Canada and I think Pandora was like an American thing, but I have it on this phone right here and it's literally playing music with ads. So it's not terrible. I mean, it does work. I think this is like the easiest way you can get music on this device. And look, we got, we got Adele rolling in the deep and it just changed to the next station. So that's pretty cool to see. Um, love to see that. Back in the day, Spotify did work, but it doesn't work anymore. And I am a Spotify user, so I was able to like download everything offline onto this device. It was actually on my other iPhone 5, which I think I have on the table over there. You know, I was hoping that it would have still been logged in to my old Spotify account, but unfortunately it did lock me out. Um, but this is a very easy workaround to this, so definitely consider getting Pandora. Now, I also wanted to mention one of the tweaks on here from this developer called Skyglow. So he's the one behind the Maps X tweak, which is a pretty cool tweak that brings functionality back to the stock iOS 6 Maps app. We'll talk about that in just a sec, but he's also created some other cool tweaks as well. You guys can check it out. I'll have it all linked down below. One of them, of course, being Stocks X. This one fixes the stock app by redirecting requests, it seems like. Um, but then there's also WeatherX, which is supposed to fix the weather app. Uh, but the problem here is that it was working for me before, but now it's simply not. It just says unknown location. So this might just be an issue on my end. 
every single time I click on that little Yahoo button, it says we'll be right back. So that could honestly just be like a glitch. So I'm just gonna give it a few days and see if this starts working, but huge shout out to this developer for actually bringing back a lot of functionality to these old features because, you know, someone's gotta do it and shout out to him for, uh, for being the one who actually made this possible. So it's definitely gonna make this a lot more usable. And of course, in terms of making the Maps application work, once again, at least to some extent, um, it is possible. I made a video on it like a couple weeks ago. I'll have it linked down below or at the top uh, right of this video as well if you guys wanna check it. Um, but yeah, it's a pretty simple process. It does work to some extent. Um, you can search things up. You can't really get directions uh, because the app isn't really working natively. It's kind of working um, just based off of this one tweak. So it's definitely not gonna have like full functionality, but like if you switch like hybrid or satellite view, it will simply kill the app, which is pretty unfortunate. But I do like that Siri does work. Take a look at this. How far, how far is Vancouver for me? I'm not sure how far away Vancouver, Canada is by car, but it's about 1,222 miles as the crow flies. That sounds about right. I think San Francisco is like 800 miles. Add like another 400 miles to that. Seems about right. So I think that's pretty accurate and I like that Siri is working on this device. Um, Siri wasn't working for the longest time. I'm not sure what happened with Apple, but they magically made Siri work again, which is honestly big for us collectors because it means we can get more functionality out of devices like these. So huge shout out to whoever at Apple made that possible. It probably wasn't even done on purpose, but it's cool to see that a lot of these features are once again working. All right, last but not least, iMessage. So iMessage still works on this device, but there is a little bit of a trick that you guys need to use in order to actually get it to work. Um, so one of the things is, is just make sure you guys have a SIM card in this device. I put one of my old SIM cards in. It does not need to be active. I'm literally using an old Bell SIM card from before I used to live uh, back in Canada. So it's, it's not active at all. It just says no service. Um, but the key here is that when you put the SIM card in, the phone is supposed to attempt to connect to iMessage using whatever number was associated with that SIM card. And so it will prompt you to then sign into your Apple ID. And that way you can actually like sign in and then actually use that specific Apple ID um, to send your messages. And because my Apple ID is linked to my personal number, it kind of just took my email and my phone number and put them both together. Um, but yeah, I was able to successfully sign into iMessage and um, it does work. It, it is gonna say waiting for activation, but it should still be working in the background. And as you guys can see, we can even send a message here. We'll just send a hi. And for some reason, it decides to send like five different highs back, which is really weird. That's definitely a really weird glitch I've never really seen before. Um, but hey, it works and it's all that matters. So you guys can definitely like send photos back and forth. I like this a lot because like, let's say if I take a photo or video with this device and I wanna quickly send it to my computer, I can literally just like send it through iMessage. So very convenient. And um, yeah, I love to see that it's working. But yeah, iOS 6 honestly can be used today in 2024. Your functionality is gonna be like severely limited to how much you could use it compared to like three years ago. But um, once you get a jailbreak on this thing, honestly, like just install the apps now. Maybe one day they'll stop working. So at least you'll have something to play around with. Um, and my advice to you guys, if you really wanna use this phone as a daily driver, I do not recommend that at all. Um, especially here in the US because the 3G network does not exist. Um, so if you put like an LTE SIM card into this device, it won't work because this isn't a voice over LTE compatible device. Um, but in some countries where 3G does exist, you can technically use this phone on like the 3G network or even the LTE network, but it's like, it's, it's gonna be really spotty. Like from when I used to live in Canada, I used to be able to pick up LTE and 3G. One day it stopped working, other days it would work for a few seconds. So again, like it's super spotty. It's not gonna be 100%. But this is a very fun device to experiment with if you guys wanna pick up like a prepaid plan. Like I'm literally gonna be in Canada this week uh, visiting my family and all my friends. So I'm gonna try out a prepaid SIM card in an iPhone 2G, but I'll also try to put it into here and see if I can get any service on that. Uh, I think that'll be pretty cool to see. Um, but yeah, overall guys, I think this is a pretty cool device to be able to use in 2024. I would mainly use this just for apps and for music. I think the fact that you can even install apps on this thing is a pretty big deal and it's definitely gonna bring a lot of functionality back. And um, if you guys are thinking about picking this up, they're pretty cheap. They really don't cost all that much. So really great device, and uh, yeah, I hope this video helped you guys out a lot. If you guys have any questions, be sure to leave them down in the comment section below. I'll be making more content in the coming weeks. I'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace.